Jonathan President Trump congratulated President Xi on being re-elected General Secretary of the CPC. The White House, the U.S., the world will be watching to see how he and the newest members of the Politburo will shape China's global role. Let's get more insight from Dali Yang, Professor of Political Science at University of Chicago. Uh, professor, let me begin with these five new appointments in the seven-member Politburo Standing Committee. Your thoughts on the new lineup, and what kind of message does it send? Well, in fact, uh, uh, Mr. Xi, in introducing the five new faces, specifically made the reference that they were all previously members of the Politburo, and now they are promoted to the Standing Committee. And that sends the message that he's making those changes in a step-by-step -step manner. No one is being uh, uh, promoted by helicopter, as the Chinese saying goes. And of course, those who uh, go beyond a certain age, uh, including Mr. Wang Qishan, for example, uh, we all have to retire. So that indicates actually uh, adherence to certain tacit rules regarding promotions. And of course, those are all people who have had very extensive experience in the Communist Party organizations and in the government. Why is the makeup of the standing committee, the Politburo Standing Committee, so important? Can you explain it to a Western audience? Well, the, uh, of course, the Communist Party is the ruling party. And in this case, uh, those key five uh, to seven members, typically, uh, they take up the key positions in the government, in the state, as the president uh, of the country, as the national legislature's leader, as leaders uh, of the state council, in other words, the cabinet as well. So therefore, they all play a very important role in executing the policies, the platform that has been set by the Communist Party leadership during the National Party Congress. And there is plenty on that agenda. Professor, of course, a big highlight from this 19th Party Congress was enshrining Xi's thought into the party constitution. Symbolism, absolutely, but also a lot of substance here. Can you explain? Oh, absolutely. It's, uh, of course, a lot of emphasis on the introduction of the new era of socialism with Chinese characteristics. In fact, uh, Mr. Xi made a, a short speech following uh, the introduction of those five new faces and the new standing committee membership of the Politburo. And in particular, he emphasized the new development concept. And in this speech, actually, he tends to speak more about things that he is especially interested in because it's short, and he's tend to be very much to the point. The last time, five years ago, he called for a beautiful China, and we know he did made a massive effort in commitment in cracking down on environmental violations. This time, in particular, he called for actually lifting everybody to join this society of modest prosperity by 2021. And he's calling for the entire party and the entire country to be devoted to the effort to counter uh, uh, poverty. And that's very significant. The other thing he uh, uh, mentioned is actually that the party will be resolute and relentless in continuing the fight against corruption. Because many people thought, oh, he was so tough on corruption in the last five years, he may actually relent on that. But he's uh, sent the message that this will, there, there will be no let up. So I think actually he's sending a very tough message. And of course, uh, he repeated the emphasis that China wants to play a global, greater global role in reshaping global governance. And well, of course, one of the first phone calls he made was with President Trump this well, morning. Let me, and let that's me, very important. Let me interrupt you for a second and ask you a question about that. She's elevated status domestically. You also mentioned on the world stage. Could that possibly change the tone and the dynamic of his upcoming meeting with President Trump when he goes to Asia next month? Well, uh, he just had his uh, mandate renewed and enhanced. Of course, uh, he's much more comfortable. And he is a veteran in actually on world stage, whereas President Trump is still actually in his first year in office. Uh, and he's had uh, significant trouble in carrying out, in getting legislation enacted in Congress. And of course, uh, uh, Mr. Xi would know that. And of course, in doing so, in negotiating trade and other issues, uh, Ch uh, China actually and President Xi, we are in fact be in a very good position vis-a-vis -vis President Trump. And I think that's very interesting in terms of thinking about those key issues, whether it's on Korea, 
and other matters. We shall see. Professor Dali Young, thank you so much.